this is english shorthand dictation number 253 and the dictation speed is 140 words per minute ready start sir the practice of hiring the teachers on contract basis has become a great problem in this country and it is adversely affecting the quality of education in india initially the government of india used to hire the teachers on contract basis in exceptional cases however in the current era it has become common method for recruitment sir we have 6.5 lakh contract teachers which is 13% of the total teachers in the country the situation in the rural areas is even worse and the percentage of contract teachers in those areas is as high as 41% in the last 5 years about 1 lakh teachers have been added in the education sector on contract basis contract teachers are appointed on ad hoc basis with no service benefits no job security and on lower salaries than the regular teachers this has caused general discontent among the teachers engaged on contract basis as a result of this we witness financial stress and lack of motivation among the teachers this kind of trend has made it difficult to attract and retain the talented teachers thus bringing down the overall quality of education in the country in our indian culture we consider our teacher as guru as god but with such kind of contractual appointments our teachers are not being treated fairly so i urge upon the government to take necessary measures for regularizing the employment of contract teachers and enhance the overall teacher welfare in the country sir the gravest issue in the country is the issue of unemployment there is no need to explain the data because no data is correct unemployment is on the increase day by day when the pandemic came many people lost their jobs how are they living i should say that they are not living they are just surviving around us they have a right to ask for whom we are running this country for what we are ruling this country our country is having this gigantic problem of unemployment the number of pandemic affected people is growing higher and higher i believe that the government has a responsibility towards them i request the government to make a plan to support them to give them some kind of allowance the government should publish an unemployment calendar and support them with a wage system the government should urgently depute a committee to look into the matter and that committee should come up with a report within 3 or 4 months this way we have to be with them the country has to tell them that they are not forgotten the country is with them sir i would like to draw the attention of the house towards some sections of the hindu succession act not being in favor of women under the gender based rules governing devolution of property the relatives of a woman's husband have a stronger claim to her property than her parents and siblings however this is not true of the property belonging to a man the present scheme of devolution keeps all the man's property within his natal family this is inconsistent with the equal treatment guaranteed in article 14 and article 15 of the constitution of india sir this anomaly under the hindu succession act also goes against india's commitment under the united nations convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women removing gender based discrimination and property related legislation is one of the core requirements of this convention the supreme court of india has also noted that a judicial or legislative intervention is necessary to remedy it there are two ongoing cases where this issue is being considered however the legislature is the appropriate forum for amending legislation we should not look towards courts for policy decisions therefore through this august house i urge upon the government to relook and revise these unfavorable sections of the act and give the rights to the women affected by these archaic rules 
Mr. Chairman, sir, it is not a small issue, but a serious issue as far as Telangana is concerned. The Adilabad district of Telangana is one of the most backward districts in the country, and it has 48% tribal population living in an ordinary state. It does not have any factories at all. It had two factories, both were closed down. With great struggle, one paper factory came back. There was cement industry which is also closed down. First it fell sick, later on it was closed down. It has its own land. It has 750 acres and also 1200 acres of leased land. It has lime deposits of 48 million tons. It has water because the Godavari flows past this area. It also has electricity because Telangana is full of electricity. It has labor. It was closed down and its employees were offered VRS. Employees went to court and got it stayed. Still, people are on rolls as far as this factory is concerned. Now, the Chief Minister has requested the Prime Minister and the central government that he is prepared to pay equity. During discussions, the Union Minister said that the National Highways Authority of India can take benefit out of this cement factory. So, let us do it. There is the issue of employees. Then there is the issue of much needed cement. The National Highways Authority of India wants to join. We are willing to give more land if they want. Whatever the central government wants, we would give that and we will join in equity. Also, the National Highways Authority of India also wants to join in equity. So, everything is straight. Let us try to concentrate on this and try to revive it because in court proceedings, people are still on rolls. That means they are still employees and have not taken their money. Honorable Chairman Sir, Similipal was declared a wildlife sanctuary by the government of Odisha more than 40 years ago. At that time, there was a proposal to accord the status of a national park to a specific area measuring 845 square kilometers. The Tiger Conservation Project had already begun in Similipal during that period. In order to help and cooperate with the wildlife authorities visiting from outside the state, some locals were engaged and they were allowed to live in the core area. However, since the people living in the core area of the sanctuary have not yet been relocated, Similipal still remains a proposed national park. Therefore, it is requested that Similipal Wildlife Sanctuary be accorded the status of a national park with immediate effect. The Department of Tourism should consider promoting Similipal as a center of tourism industry. This will provide employment opportunities to the unemployed youth of the district and there will be socio-economic development in the area. Due to operational flaws in the system, forest fire in the summer has become an annual affair and the fire is raging even at present. As a result, various species of plants and animals are in a continuous state of danger. It is a pity that the news related to Similipal is not being reported by the media. Last year, I myself tried to douse the jungle fire to get rid of the menace. As the fire incidents are largely man-made, steps should be taken for their permanent solution so that both humans and the environment can coexist in harmony. Therefore, I urge upon the government through this August House to look into the matter with due earnest and to accord the status of National Park to Simili Pal. Sir, I thank you for permitting me to speak on implementation of metro rail projects in Tamil Nadu. Coimbatore is the second largest city in terms of GDP in the state of Tamil Nadu after the capital of Chennai. It has a population of approximately 30 lakhs. Apart from the local traffic, the people from neighboring districts travel to Coimbatore city for work, education and medical needs. Technically, 15 to 20 lakh people commute daily in and around Coimbatore for the above purposes. 
Considering these aspects, the state government of Tamil Nadu proposed for the metro rail project in Coimbatore city. The feasibility study and the DPR have been completed and the state government of Tamil Nadu has allocated the fund for the project.